In cryptanalysis, frequency analysis is the study of the frequency of letters or groups of letters in a cipher text. The method is used as an aid to breaking classical ciphers. Frequency analysis is based on the fact that, in any given stretch of written language, certain letters and combinations of letters occur with varying frequencies. Moreover, there is a characteristic distribution of letters that is roughly the same for almost all samples of that language. For instance, given a section of English language, E, T, A and O are the most common, while Z, Q and X are rare. Likewise, T, H, A, on, and an are the most common pairs of letters, and S, S, E, T, T, and F, F are the most common repeats. The nonsense phrase ETAOINSHRDLU represents the 12 most frequent letters in typical English language text. In some ciphers, such properties of the natural language plain text are preserved in the ciphertext, and these patterns have the potential to be exploited in a ciphertext only attack. Frequency analysis for simple substitution ciphers. In a simple substitution cipher, each letter of the plain text is replaced with another, and any particular letter in the plain text will always be transformed into the same letter in the cipher text. For instance, if all occurrences of the letter E turn into the letter X, a cipher text message containing numerous instances of the letter X would suggest to a cryptanalyst that X represents E. The basic use of frequency analysis is to first count the frequency of ciphertext letters and then associate guest plain text letters with them. More X's in the ciphertext than anything else suggests that X corresponds to E in the plain text. But this is not certain. T and A are also very common in English, so X might be either of them also. It is unlikely to be a plain text Z or Q which are less common. Thus the cryptanalyst may need to try several combinations of mappings between ciphertext and plain text letters. More complex use of statistics can be conceived, such as considering counts of pairs of letters, triplets, and so on. This is done to provide more information to the cryptanalyst. For instance, Q and U nearly always occur together in that order in English, even though Q itself is rare. An example suppose Eve has intercepted the cryptogram below, and it is known to be encrypted using a simple substitution cipher as follows. L I V I T C S W P I Y V E W H E V S R I Q M X L E Y V E O I E W H R X E X I P F E M V E W H K V S T Y L X Z I X L I K I I X P I J V S Z E Y P E R G E R I M W Q L M G L M X Q E R I W G P S R I H M X Q E R E K I E T X M J T P R G E V E K E I T R E W H E X X L E X X M Z I T W A W S Q W X S W E X T V E P M R X R S J G S T V R I E Y V I E X C V M U I M W E R G M I W X X M J M G C S M W X S J O M I Q X L I V I Q I V I X Q S V S T W H K P G A R C S X R W I E V S W I I B X V I Z M X F S J X L I K E G A E W H E P S W Y S W I W I E V X L I S X L I V X L I R G E P I R Q I V I I B G I I A H M W Y P F L E V H E W H Y P S R R F Q M X L E P P X L I E C C I E V W G I S J K T V W M R L I H Y S P H X L I Q I M Y L X S J X L I M W R I G X Q E R O I V F V 
WHXCAMWYEPP, WYMX for this example. Uppercase letters are used to denote ciphertext, lowercase letters are used to denote plain text, and X tilde T is used to express a guess that ciphertext letter X represents the plain text letter T. Eve could use frequency analysis to help solve the message along the following lines. Counts of the letters in the cryptogram show that I is the most common single letter, XL most common bigram, and XLI is the most common trigram. E is the most common letter in the English language, TH is the most common bigram, and the most common trigram. This strongly suggests that X tilde T, L tilde H and I tilde E. The second most common letter in the cryptogram is E, since the first and second most frequent letters in the English language, E and T are accounted for. Eve guesses that E tilde A, the third most frequent letter. Tentatively making these assumptions, the following partial decrypted message is obtained. Havetch spavifavs recum thaviv to tefam vafstite zathik epij so epargrim. WQHM GHMT karegs framed naragiatum pgovak iatrafap that set worsk swadvats. Gust ravorch mumwag mit maim gc's moots jomak de vek of et quan tv struk pagarks twiv sweeb tv. EZMTFS j thek agarif up sways where weave the steve the gape her kevi bjane whip for hor hipsurf kumtha. PP theatre vigus tv me has thek mites them regner o of vesavark pay after arm y up. Then rims go mhevits wist for pasant semtevjumsk mooms for sigmwimt using these initial guesses. Eve can spot patterns that confirm her choices, such as that. Moreover, other patterns suggest further guesses. RTATE might be state, which would mean R tilde S. Similarly, at that Z could be guessed as at the time, yielding M tilde I and Z tilde M. Furthermore, Hever might be here, giving V tilde R. Filling in these guesses, Eve gets. Erech sperifasuki thyria if start et fair if start med keepage sme pas gase. W kayak kasos hith kasakia tips garakets or hath at time forced swatripists. Gasiare kriue was gutijix its joyak the rakarit curse to a gasp swears weeb. Omitted shirj the kagarif up sways we wear theethers gape eskarubki he wapah or hips skitha. PP the axir august rushi his thekates theres in kiso a free mararak pti y up. The was e woo sieratis vigs thefaf pament sita chishi was resage t wyat in turn. These guesses suggest still others and so on, and it is relatively straightforward to deduce the rest of the letters, eventually yielding the plain text. Hereupon Lee Grand arose with the grave and stateler air on brought mother beetle from Maglas Gase, and which it was enclosed I twas a beautiful scarabaea sand at that I'm unknown to naturalists of. Court agreed prize in a scientific point of view theory to around black spots near one eek tr. A mitty of the back hand along on an ear that the scales were re exceedingly had and glossy with a the appearance of burnished gold the weight of the insect to a sphere marker villain taking ill. Things into consideration are coldly blame Jupiter for high opinion respecting it at this point. It would be a good idea for Eve to insert spaces and punctuation. Hereupon Legrand arose, with a grave and stately air, and brought me the beetle from a glass case in which it was enclosed. It was a beautiful scarabaeus, and, at that time, unknown to naturalists, of course a great prize in a scientific point of view. There were two round black spots near one extremity of the back and a long one near the other. The scales were exceedingly hard and glossy, with all the appearance of burnished gold. The weight of the insect was very remarkable, and, taking all things into consideration, I could hardly blame Jupiter for his opinion respecting it. In this example from the gold bug, Eve's guesses were all correct. 
This would not always be the case, however, the variation in statistics for individual plain texts can mean that initial guesses are incorrect. It may be necessary to backtrack incorrect guesses or to analyze the available statistics in much more depth than the somewhat simplified justifications given in the above example. It is also possible that the plain text does not exhibit the expected distribution of letter frequencies. Shorter messages are likely to show more variation. It is also possible to construct artificially skewed texts. For example, entire novels have been written that omit the letter E altogether, a form of literature known as a lipogram. History and usage The first known recorded explanation of frequency analysis was given in the 9th century by Alkandi, an Arab polymath, in a manuscript on deciphering cryptographic messages. It has been suggested that close textual study of the Quran first brought to light that Arabic has a characteristic letter frequency. Its use spread, and similar systems were widely used in European states by the time of the Renaissance. By 1474, Chico Simonetta had written a manual on deciphering encryptions of Latin and Italian text. Arabic letter frequency and a detailed study of letter and word frequency analysis of the entire Book of Quran are provided by Interlaran articles. Several schemes were invented by cryptographers to defeat this weakness in simple substitution encryptions. These included homophonic substitution, use of homophones, several alternatives to the most common letters in otherwise monoalphabetic substitution ciphers. For example, for English, both X and Y ciphertexts might mean plain text E. Polyalphabetic substitution, that is, the use of several alphabets, chosen in assorted, more or less devious, ways, and polygraphic substitution, schemes where pairs or triplets of plain text letters are treated as units for substitution, rather than single letters. For example, the Playfair cipher invented by Charles Wheatstone in the mid-19th century. A disadvantage of all these attempts to defeat frequency counting attacks is that it increases complication of both enciphering and deciphering, leading to mistakes. Famously, a British foreign secretary is said to have rejected the Playfair cipher because even if schoolboys could cope successfully as Wheatstone and Playfair had shown, our attaches could never learn it. The rotor machines of the first half of the 20th century were essentially immune to straightforward frequency analysis. However, other kinds of analysis successfully decoded messages from some of those machines. Frequency analysis requires only a basic understanding of the statistics of the plain text language and sim problem-solving skills, and, if performed by hand, tolerance for extensive letter bookkeeping. During World War II, both the British and the Americans recruited codebreakers by placing crossword puzzles in major newspapers and running contests for who could solve them the fastest. Several of the ciphers used by the Axis powers were breakable using frequency analysis, for example, some of the consular ciphers used by the Japanese. Mechanical methods of letter counting and statistical analysis were first used in World War II, possibly by the U.S. Army's CIS. Today, the hard work of letter counting and analysis has been replaced by computer software, which can carry out such analysis in seconds. With modern computing power, classical ciphers are unlikely to provide any real protection for confidential data. Frequency analysis in fiction Frequency analysis has been described in fiction. Edgar Allan Poe's The Gold Bug, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes' tale, The Adventure of the Dancing Men, are examples of stories which describe the use of frequency analysis to attack simple substitution ciphers. The cipher in the Poe story is encrusted with several deception measures, but this is more a literary device than anything significant cryptographically.